Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here again with our guest mentor, Ellie, and, and we thought we'd ha- do something a little bit different where we wanted to combine a few topics together and uh, chunk them up into little kind of uh, mini-sodes is what we're calling them. So we wanted to be under the broader topic of kind of the, the odyssey. So for the folks that uh, are aware, they've started adding some new life stages <laughs> in be- after um, kind of childhood, teenage years, and before you get to the adults stage, they, they've added this, this ad- odyssey type um, uh, time stage where a, a lot of people are, are figuring things out. And we thought we'd get into three major topics. We'd get into uh, learning how to self-advocate. We talked to, we were going to get into dealing with um, adversity. And the last one is, is just uh, adulting, right, in, in general. So we thought we'd kind of break it down into those uh, three topics. The third episode uh, or the mini-sode of uh, adulting. So, so talking about becoming an adult because folks uh, have um, graduated. And generally speaking, when you're 18, you're considered an adult, right? At least in the eyes of the law, right? But there are different types where you're, you're kind of that legal adult at 18. Uh, and then when you kind of move out of the house and, and you're more independent, you're a functional adult in the sense that you can kind of pay your taxes and, and, and have a driver's license, book your own dentist appointments and stuff like that. But then the, the kind of uh, top level is the emotional adult where you're able to deal with adversity and, and uh, all of the other things that, that, that we talked about. And you, you're really um, that, that top of the, the adult chain where you're not just uh, functioning properly and, and do, going through the motions, you're actually able to help others in, in the process. So uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, kind of your adulting journey <laughs> and, and some of the, the, the milestones that you went uh, along the way. Yeah, adulting is such a I mean, I, I haven't mastered adulting yet by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but just to know, note, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Just to note to especially all the, the younger folks who are thinking that adulting is scary. Um, truly and honestly, nobody has got it perfect. And everybody's still stumbling and fumbling their way through what we call adulthood. Um, a lot of us are just pretending to be functional adults, but we're, we're all still learning. And so all that is to say is that, you know, my journey through what I've been calling adulting is I really reflect on what I've, what I've learned. Um, I won't talk about so much what I've done because what you do or what you're able to accomplish depends on so many variables, mostly dealing with your parents and where you're born, where you grew up, what kind of family you grew up in. Um, but the type of adulting that you have a little bit more control over is things like your Mm -hmm. self-awareness, understanding your own goals, understanding what motivates you, um, understanding what lights a fire inside your soul and what makes you passionate about your, your career, um, understanding what you want to learn. That to me is actually like becoming an adult or one of the really important parts to me. So when I think about adulting, I think about being a teenager and starting to get my first job at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. Um, That was one of my early forays into adulting because (laughs) I had to, I had responsibilities at my job. Right. So definitely encouraging all people, all young folks out there to start volunteering, get a job uh, when you're younger. It will help you with adulting so much. Mm -hmm. Um, Then moving through university, adulting became things like having to plan my own schedules out, um, having to, you know, apply for jobs, like co-op jobs, and having to think about planning my food um, more rigorously because I was studying at university for so many hours every day. Right. Adulting as I am now, I just turned 25. Um, Adulting for me is thinking about how much money am I going to spend on stuff? Uh, Because there's a difference between buying things that you want and buying things that you need. Yeah. Um, And also, again, like acting in a way that's aligned with my personal values and seeking professional development opportunities that are aligned with what I truly want to do and not just chasing things for a salary or for a paycheck. Yeah. 
I think what speaks to me about uh, what you said is for, for those that are on the, the younger end is to um, kind of ease your way into it instead of kind of diving into the deep end to use a, a swimming analogy. But if you had to basically uh, had your life taken care of you where your, your parents are really doing everything for you and then uh, you graduate and suddenly you're, you're on your own, you have to pay rent, you have to get a job, you have to cook, you have to do a blah, 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 blah. And, and you're suddenly thrown into the deep end of adulting. That's not a, a great thing to, to do, right? Versus, well, get a, a job or volunteer when, you, when you're a little bit younger, even in high school, even younger if you can manage, uh, and then maybe start volunteering and help cooking, right? Uh, some, something simple around the house and cleaning and uh, well, you probably won't be able to pay taxes and bills <laughs> at that point in time, but uh, maybe start start saving uh, that, that sort of thing, a, a little kind of youth account, that sort of thing. They, they often have those um, and, and kind of understanding what goes into uh, growing up. And then that'll allow you uh, to focus on some of the bigger picture stuff. So as you said, like your purpose and figuring out like, can I do something? Can I find a job? Can I find a career that fulfills me? Um, or is it just a hobby that I do on the side or, or is there something else? And then you get into uh, kind of growing up. And if you go the path of starting a family, how do you kind of share those values with, with uh, your, your children or, or your friends or whoever around you as well? So a lot of def different things there. Uh, what are some of the, 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 the life lessons that you learn along the way and some of the learnings that you might want to take uh, or share with folks to, to help ease them into the kind of adulting stages that, that come later on? Yeah. Um, wow. Big question to ask a 25 year old. Um, <laughs> when I was 17, I wish I knew that graduating high school and going into post-secondary education does not mean that I'm like picking my career. Sure. I, I wish. So I, I went into sciences. I studied biology at University of Toronto um, because I just didn't really know what other career paths existed. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be like a researcher, a professor. Um, I'm not, <laughs> you slash. And so I'd say the, the biggest lesson that I wish I learned earlier was to explore what really interested me at that mm -hmm. age. And then furthermore, as I got older, to sit in the discomfort of not knowing right. I didn't really know what career I would end up in when I was going through undergrad. I didn't even know that like the job that I have exists. I, I truly did not. And so being able to sit with that, with that discomfort, but moreover, understanding what lights the fire inside of you. Mm -hmm. If you love working with people, working in a team, like take mental note of that. Um, if you're really good at like analytical problem solving, if you make spreadsheets for fun, like if you've been tracking the COVID data and like analyzing the data on your, like by yourself for fun, like take note of that and actually pursue a career or a post-secondary education that has to do with that. So understanding yourself and reflecting on it, it's very, very, very helpful. Yeah, I think what speaks to me on, on that side is a, a lot of folks, when, when they're younger and they've graduated, they, they want to find their, their passion and, and work through their passion and, and, and follow it and whatever. And, and I actually say that, well, I, I don't think people follow their passion so much as they, they create their passion. And, and what I mean by that is like, you don't just wake up and have this thought exercise and, oh yeah, I'm suddenly passionate about data. I'm suddenly passionate about this. I'm suddenly passionate about whatever. Usually it's, it's, it's a bit of a, a build up to that where it starts off with a bit of curiosity. Oh, I'm, I'm wondering uh, like, what is this data? What can I get out of it? What can I um, do with it? And what sort of insights can I gather? And, and from that curiosity, you spend some time with it, right? You, you, you play around with the data and then it becomes interesting. Uh, and, and that curiosity develops into an interest and then it, interest hopefully turns into an excitement and then that excitement turns into a passion right so it, it's a bit of an evolution there where uh that might be over uh months weeks years right or it could be uh, overnight in a sense but it does take some time where it, it's hard to be passionate about uh something that you just picked up yesterday right uh, although you, you can have that that true uh, excitement uh, and interest in it uh and then when you do it over a sustained amount of time that often becomes kind of that passion. So I think that's a great uh, insight for folks to kind of consider in order to uh, become that that adult, because uh, oftentimes that's one thing where, it, in all honesty, most adults <laughs> don't even have where they're working and they're operating in that kind of functional adult capacity where they're, they're living, they're surviving, but they're not uh, thriving as most people would, would, would want to be doing. Yeah. To, to put what you said in a nutshell, 
would you agree that you're saying you don't have to have it figure it out all at once, all at the beginning? A absolutely. So it's one of those things where uh, in, in generations before, you needed to have some stuff figured out. And, and the thing is, you, you would make a bit of a commitment that uh, you would work in that career path for the next 40 years or whatever. And, and people were, uh, were okay with that, right? So in, in those days, uh, your high school choice on what degree to go to or, and, and what uh, career path to go down was semi-permanent. But uh, or at least that was not that was the norm, right? Nowadays, right? Uh, people are hopping careers all the time. So if, if I take myself as as a uh, case in point, I mean, I, I did computer science, and then I went into more of the business side, and and now I'm I guess I'm in education, and I still have a good uh, two or three decades left, <laughs> in, depending on on how how long I, I continue working, right? And will I continue to do that, or maybe I'll. I'll pick up cooking and then become a chef or whatever, or, or maybe go into uh, pharmaceuticals or whatever, right? So uh, I, I have no idea. Um, and it's one where uh, e even nowadays with things like the gig economy, right? People are doing multiple things at the same time. So it's not even uh, one thing after the other. It's just, they, they, they have a whole bunch of different disciplines that they're um, undertaking from, from nine to five in the morning and then evenings they have, they moonlight as something else and they do, they'll do that for, uh, the summer and they do something different uh, in the winter, right? So it, it's an amazing time to be living where there's so many more opportunities. And uh, the, the interesting thing on that is what you'll end up doing in five years, 10 years, there's a lot of stats there where a lot of those jobs haven't even been in invented yet, created yet. Yep. So you might not mm -hmm. even know. So, so to be able to predict and, and even to commit yourself to, to doing that for the next 20, 40 years, uh, seems a little bit short-sighted <laughs> that you're not taking a look at the, all the potential opportunities. So uh, definitely um, take that. And, and one thing that I encourage uh, students and, and, and youth to, to do is become lifelong learners, right? J just because you graduated doesn't mean you stop learning, right? To, to always pick up some new skills and, and whether it's on the job, whether it's something on the side, just being interested in something and, and advancing yourself I think would be a, a very useful thing to, to incorporate into your uh, daily routine, weekly routine or whatever, uh, because that will help kind of future-proof yourself <laughs> for any careers upcoming and, and, and just have a, a better life in, in general. Yeah, I, I'd love to reflect on what you were speaking about just before you ended off on, on the last topic, uh, where you were talking about different jobs and how you know, different jobs will, will and will not exist in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, and to translate that into practical advice um, for students who are thinking about, like, what, what do I study or, like, what do I do as a career? Like, you don't need to think about a specific job title because, like you said, Luki, to your point, it will probably not exist. Sure. And so the practical advice there is, like, in everything that you do, try to pick out the things that were the most interesting to you mm -hmm. because that will help you try to find your path a little bit more. For example, for me... Um, my first job was I was a cashier at a grocery store and I thought that I hated it. Uh, and for the most part, I did like it was it was tough, like being on your feet for a whole shift and like having to just like scan groceries all the time. Um, it was like hard work. But what I reflected on and realized much later, what I actually liked to do within that job was to help people. I really found it satisfying when people thanked me for helping them mm -hmm. with their groceries. And so the advice for students is like, whatever you do, even if you hate your crappy part-time job, that's okay. Um, but think about at least that one or two things that you like within that job. Do you love working with your coworkers in a team? Like take that and figure out how you can apply that to what you might want to study or do as a career. So you don't have to think about a specific job title. Just pick up, pick out things from what you're currently doing that really light that fire inside of you. Yeah, and, and one of the recommendations I often have for folks is to pick off what you said before about kind of journaling uh, and, and apply it to, to this context where um, I, I use what I call the, the 5 two, two, one journaling method where basically five minutes, uh, two minutes journaling on things that drained you, those things that you'd rather not continue doing uh, again, uh, and then two minutes on what, excited you, what energized you, what lit you up uh, during the day. And then the last one minute thinking about, well, how can you minimize the first 
and maximize the second. And then ideally over the course of a week, a month, a year, and you start noticing patterns, right? And those patterns are ideally the, the future job or career path that you're going to look into and be able to develop uh, in, into kind of a very fruitful and, and meaningful career. So uh, definitely one where, where you, you can take the time to, to reflect. And, and it's one where uh, th there's all sorts of folks where they talk about like success in terms of like money and titles and stuff like that. Well, you want to figure out whether or not that applies for you. Right. And if that's something that you need to under, undertake where you need the big fancy title and the corner office and what have you, or would you rather be doing something that that lights you up on a day to day basis? Um, right. So those are just some other uh, con considerations. So, well, thanks so much for, for talking a little bit about uh, kind of the, the odyssey and, and we'll kind of. I believe we gave some useful in insights for folks that are going through that adulting phase and uh, going through that odyssey in general. And uh, hopefully folks will uh, be able to um, reflect and, and apply to themselves and, and as well be have a little bit of forewarning <laughs> for those that are yet to encounter this, that, uh, that there will be some uh, adversity that, that's coming and you will need to learn to self-advocate uh, as you kind of grow up and, and get into that ad adulting world as well. So are there any kind of words of wisdom that you'd want to uh, leave folks with uh, as we kind of conclude this, this mini-sode? Yeah, thank you. I love that you tied together the three things. Like you can't really start to master adulting unless you learn more about self-advocacy. And in order for you to you know, deal with adversity. Part of that is also self-advocacy. Um, in terms of words, words of wisdom for folks, you learn so much by talking to other people. You and I could have a whole episode on the value of networking. Mm -hmm. You could have, we could go on forever about that, but really talking to other people who are doing jobs that seem cool um, and like asking them questions or talking to a guidance counselor or an academic advisor um, in high school or university and saying, look, I'm really interested in this. Like, what can I do with that? Mm -hmm. Talking to people through these thoughts that you have about adversity or some questions that you have about how to set boundaries. Talking to people will always give you more insights than just keeping it all in your head. For sure. And I think uh, taking some time throughout the, the years and throughout your career to check in on yourself, because mm -hmm. that decision that you made in when you were 17, 18, <laughs> right? And that, that subsequent decision that you made when you're 22 might not resonate when you're 25 or 35 and that sort of thing, because life changes and, and you change as well. Um, and circumstances change. So if you can kind of uh, just, just re redirect yourself or, or kind of um, recalibrate yourself, I think that would be a, a useful thing. Uh, and changing is, is okay, right? Being able to do something different is, is not a bad thing as well, and probably makes for a very fruitful uh, career and, and an interesting life. So thanks so much, Ellie, for joining us in the, the conversation, and, and hopefully we'll have you back uh, for future episodes to talk about more things uh, in, in careers and life. Thank you, Luki. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.